How's it going, my good friends? Uh, so, for this project, for the next project, I want to make a device called the Astrolabe. And so, because it is a bit complex and has a lot to it, I decided that for this video, I want to go through uh, how to use it and uh, how it is constructed, and also to show my own design and thoughts. And so, uh, yeah, let's get to it, and I hope you enjoy. So the Astrolabe was first invented in uh, ancient Greek, somewhere along the lines of 200 years before the most famous carpenter, and later was mostly used and further developed in the Islamic world in the Middle Ages, and also used a long time after that. And so what is an Astrolabe exactly? Well, the word itself comes from uh, Astro, which is, you know, stars and all of that, and Lab, which is literally a refreshment, such as a cool drink, or food product. Okay, it means something to like to take or to measure. So what would you use it for? Well, it's obvious that it has something to do with stars, uh, astronomy and astrology. So it had many, many different uses, uh, such as navigation, telling time uh, during the day, also during the night, telling dates, celestial events, and many, many other things. So I uh, decided I want to make my own one and I want to keep it fairly similar to the older versions, the older Islamic versions to be precise. So I've used the Arabic words and the terms and the different names for the stars, signs and all what's around that. And so the only thing that I've really changed is in the aestheticness of the, of the instrument. And especially with the star pointers that I've decided I will make them my own hands, kind of. Uh, so it looks like the astrolabe is pointing with those uh, said hands. So I would like to give a brief explanation how the device is being constructed. And this is my design that I've made. And I will show and explain how to use it. So the first piece is the housing piece, and it is called the mater in Latin, or um in Arabic, and that literally means a mother. Now on the outer ring you can see the degrees are written in Arabic letters, and there are letters instead of numbers, because uh, back in those days, and actually also today, you would use, uh, in Arabic and in Hebrew, you would use the, the value of the letters as the numbers themselves. So for instance, this first letter a ha is the fifth letter, therefore it's equivalent to five, so meaning five degrees. Now the astrolabe also holds the scale of the hours during the day, and it has 24 hours instead of 12, uh, because you need the entirety of the day to be shown on the instrument. So the next piece is the plate, and this can be a bit intimidating at first, but I will try to keep it simple, uh, because simple is all I have. So uh, I will give a very high-end cutting edge and very accurate simulation to illustrate what that means. Alright, just to make things a little bit clearer, uh, the line here that goes right through the middle is the horizon line. So everything above the horizon line will be visible in the sky and everything underneath it will be blocked by the Earth's ground. And so this point right here is called the zenith, zenith point, and uh, this is the point right above your head in the sky. And so for example, if you were at the North Pole, then this point will be right in the middle and the horizon line would be a ring circling around it. So the third part and probably the most important piece is uh, called the Riti in Latin, which holds all the information for the fixed star locations and also the sun's path. 
Now the sun's path is represented with a ring, and that's because when we on Earth circle around the sun, the sun appears in front of different star constellations. Uh, so for instance, if you were born in May or June, then your zodiac sign would be Gemini. And that literally means that the sun is in front of the Gemini star constellation. Okay, so let's give a quick demonstration how to use this device. Now we don't have it physically just yet, so we cannot observe the star, but we can still tell a few things just from that. So what we are going to do is trying to find out when will the sun rise in November 22nd. Now I chose this date in particular because it is right in between Scorpio and Sagittarius, so it's relatively easy to find on the astrolabe. So we take another part which is called the ruler and we move it right to this date on the astrolabe. And then we take both the Riti and the ruler and we move them together to the horizon line where the sun should rise. And just to note, the east and west are flipped, therefore we are going to the left side instead of the right. So here we are, now we can do the math, and if every 15 degrees is one hour, so we are right about 7.20 to 7.30. So let's check ourselves online and see if we are somewhat correct. So we write 22nd of November, and our latitude is at 50 north. So we'll just put that and hit calculate. And so you see we got 724, which is amazingly close. It, it is right where we landed. And so it really is quite amazing to see that they had pretty accurate instruments back in those days. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video and find it interesting as much as I have. Uh, that was quite a lot to research and quite a lot to understand how this device works and so I uh, made myself kind of a cheat sheet <laughs> it sounds, sounded weird somehow um, but yeah I have this these are just examples of old Estelate and uh, and this is yeah just to help me this is not how the astrolabe is gonna look like but uh, this is just to help me locate the stars in the modern version of the map Somewhat, I suppose, and I also, of course, had to make it prettier or something. Uh, so I have all the names of the stars right here in Arabic, Hebrew, English, Latin, all of that. Um, and then I have the layouts, which I'm going to transfer to the metal and cut it out. So this is going to be, so this is going to be a lot of uh, a lot of scroll work. But uh, we're gonna make it so. So anyway, I will see you again, uh, hopefully real soon, with the actual build part of the project. And uh, and yeah, have fun and see you soon.